Bonjour. Comment ça va? John, congratulations. You've, uh, you've had more than your share of championship victories throughout your career, but I guess this one might feel a little different, a little special. I guess, can you put into words what uh, this one means to you? I, I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm very grateful. Um, without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I would have never made it this far. And I just want to acknowledge him and everything that I am and everything that I do. Um, I want to thank everybody out there who prayed for me. I, I felt their energy, and, um, and I'm very grateful. Uh, this, this fight means a lot. It means a lot. Uh, I'm humbled by it. And uh, it just goes to show that you know, no matter what happens in life, if you just continue to strive, put one foot in front of the other, uh, the, the sky's the limit, and this, this world really can be your oyster. Um, I've never felt more at peace. I've never felt more happy. Last night at my, at my, uh, my, my fight dinner, I almost cried. I felt like I was living in a dream. I looked around and I, I just saw so many leaders. A lot of my friends these days are great business owners. They're great dads. They're great friends. They're men of, of substance. Um, I, I got really great men and women in my life. My fiance. My beautiful daughters, my fiance's support system, her friends. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really happy. I'm really happy. I feel like my, my whole world is a byproduct of uh, the people that are in my life. So I just, I just want to thank every single one of, uh, of my supporters, my fans. Um, without them, I'd be, I wouldn't be much. <laughs> Might be too. Can you talk about the feeling as you stepped in there tonight, right? I mean, it's been three years. Uh, you're up a weight class against a very big dude. I mean, was there a different nervous kind of energy than usual when you got in there? I mean, Surreal Gain has a great physique. Let's, let's, we all know that. The guy looks like a bodybuilder. Um, but, you know, my coaches reminded me, John, you know, Tiago Santos had a really awesome physique. Uh, Vitor Belfort had muscles in his earlobes. And... <laughs> Uh, and so it was just like, you know, it's, it's not a bodybuilding competition. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, about, it's about heart. It's about grit. It's about wanting to be out there. And um, my buddy Brian McKenzie, he said something to me right before I went out to the cage. He said, he said uh, like, neurologically, a, uh, a cow and a lion, they feel the same emotions when they're fighting. They're both pumped up with adrenaline. He said the only difference is the lion actually wants to be there. And um, it was a perfect thing to say to me in a moment because I was nervous. And he, had, he reminded me, bro, it's normal. And uh, do you want to be here? And at that moment, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to be here. And I want more. And um, I just went out there with a very offensive mindset. And uh, we got it done. I'm not sure if I answered your question or not. I'm just talking. <laughs> That's all right. And, and talk to me. I mean, obviously, we knew the wrestling skills would be there, but uh, at heavyweight, you hadn't wrestled a heavyweight before. Uh, so I guess how did it feel in there? Was it more difficult? Did you feel the strength as an issue uh, when you went through the wrestling sequences? I, I really do believe that uh, I'm one of the strongest heavyweights uh, in the heavyweight division. When I was a light heavyweight, people would say all the time, John is a lot stronger than what he appears to be. Um, every, almost every opponent, you know, can say that. And now that I've, that I've been powerlifting, and, uh, and living a martial arts lifestyle, I really, truly believe that I'm the strongest heavyweight in the heavyweight division. There's guys that can, that can do a lot of things probably more than me. Guys can squat more than me, bench more than me. But when it comes to just, uh, just total strength and muscular endurance and knowing how to pace yourself and knowing how to use endurance, I, I believe I'm one of the most fit athletes in the game, whether I look like it or not. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. I think some of my best performances are going to be coming within the next year or so. Well, like you said, performances, so that means more than one. But I guess you made it clear that you said you want Stipe next. Uh, uh, a timeline? Is there anything? I mean, are you have a date circled on the calendar yet, or do you have an idea like what would make the most sense for you? I, I got to talk to my coaching staff and see how, you know what they think. But we took zero damage tonight, and uh, I'm getting right back to practice. My buddy Maurice Green has a fight coming up in the PFL. Um, uh, Jorgen DeCastro has a fight coming up in the PFL. And uh, I owe it to my team to, to uh, take the back seat and be the training partner. 
And that's exactly what we got to do. We get right back to work. And uh, I believe in my next fight, I'll, I'll go into it with a different level of confidence, an even higher level of confidence. I believe that I'm going to look really great. I'm going to have even higher endurance than I had today, which is going to be hard to beat because I'm in really great condition. And uh, <laughs> these guys in the back acting like nuts. <laughs> I can't take you. I can't take you guys anywhere. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the, the next fight is going to be awesome. Um, I, say it, I say it respectfully to Stipe. I would take time off from being a firefighter right now. And I mean that with all due respect. Um, my whole world is going to be focused on him. This is the biggest opportunity in my life to beat the heavyweight GOAT. And I'm going to give it everything I got, absolutely everything I got. Stipe's talking about the fact that he's heavier than me right now. Uh, you know, his head, his head's already in the wrong spot if he thinks weightlifting is going to beat me. He'll never be younger than he is right now. He'll never be faster. And um, I'm going to not only beat Stipe Miocic, I'm going to finish Stipe Miocic before the championship rounds. John, over here. Uh, you had alluded to in your post fight interview that you maybe uh, interview felt off with your striking. Uh, what was that, just like nerves or ring rust or what? Well, <clears throat> there's always a slight filling out process. Um, I actually was dealing with a slight injury uh, before this fight, and I didn't really spar many times. I sparred the total of three times uh, uh, in this training camp. And um, so my, my striking felt a little unfamiliar. I, I had drilled a lot. I did a lot of smart drilling, but I didn't spar a lot. And so um, when I was out there, it was almost like I was trying to remember how to do it, uh, fight on the feet for a moment. Um, but thank God that didn't last too long. I, I was able to get my hands in them. And that's something I've been doing my whole life. I've been wrestling and grappling my whole life. I feel like my jiu-jitsu is at an all-time high. My wrestling confidence is at an all-time high. and. Um, that, that just may be my style moving forward, you know, getting away from all the kickboxing. I want to save brain cells, and uh, fighting on the ground is just a lot more advantageous. What was going on with the tape on your toes? They looked like they were cutting it off before you were getting in there? Yeah, so uh, I use the different tape. I usually use a, a certain brand of tape. I'll give them a shout out, War Tape. And um, I feel like it's just a lot stickier. I, I used the UFC's tape tonight, and as soon as my body started to sweat, the tape was sliding all over the place. And uh, so I, I made like a, almost like a little cast around my toe that linked down to the middle of my foot uh, so that the, the tape wouldn't slide off the, my, my, uh, my toes. And when I got out there, the commission was just like, you can't tape your feet. And I'm like, dude, I've always taped my feet. I'm not going to compete if I can't take my toes. I just won't do it. I want everyone to know that for the future. Um, so thank God we didn't have a disaster out there tonight. But um, they, they ended up changing the tone a little bit. They allowed me to keep my toes taped. And they had made me take the rest of the tape off the rest of my foot. And um, it, was, it was a nice little distraction going into the fight. One thing about my job is that it throws curveballs, and we got to be able to think on the fly. We got to be able to improvise. And so I just stay calm. I just, you know, I just said, John, it's nothing much. You stay cool. Keep your head in the game. And uh, we got the tape off the rest of my foot, and I was able to go out there and proceed and to the mission. John, uh, to your left. Um, we, you know, you've always been a popular fighter, but it seems like this week, You've gone to another level, right? The press conference, I know you really enjoyed that, the way the crowd reacted to you. What was it like tonight? You know, you kind of got the biggest pop of all when you got in the cage, the place went nuts. And, you know, a lot of times you've been the bad guy, right? Now you were the good guy and everybody was happy to see you. What, is, what did that feel like for you? It, you know, when, when I first got into the UFC, I would talk about God a lot and, and wanting to be a good person. And, um, and then people got to see that my life wasn't perfect, that I make mistakes and that I sin, and that I, I fall down. And um, I think for a long time, people looked at me as just an incredibly fake individual. And I think as of right now, I think people can just see that I'm a human, that I do love God, but I'm a human. And uh, Christians aren't perfect. And I just think I'm more relatable to people than I've ever been. And um, 
you know, despite how many times I mess up, I, I do try to stand for good and something that's bigger than me. And um, I just think there's a, there's a relatability that I have with people where either you absolutely hate me or, you, or you're just learning to understand the man that I am. And uh, I, think it's, I, think, I just think it's going over well for me. When did you adopt that attitude, right? I mean, when, how, how and when did it change? Uh, you know, I came into the game young, and uh, I think I was like 21, 20 years old when I, when I joined the UFC, 19 or something. And I'm 35 years old now. I just got off of a big hiatus. I took three years off. I got to focus on my family. I got to focus on development as a man. I got to, uh, I got to start a care project where I'm giving back to the city of Albuquerque. I got to have a dog that was my best friend. You know what I mean? Just, just little stuff that had nothing to do with being John Bones Jones. It just helped me put life in perspective. It just, just helped me realize what an opportunity I have. And I've had a lot of reflection time. I've got to see the belt passed around from champion to champion. And all these guys from different countries become the face of the sport. And it's been awesome to witness. And um, just today, I just have my head screwed on a little bit more straight than it's ever been. And uh, just more self-aware. And uh, I, think, I think people are starting to notice that. Hey, Last question for me. You know, uh, Dana was up here before talking about you being the GOAT and unquestionably the GOAT anymore. And you think of most sports, you know, most people think Michael Jordan, but there's some people think LeBron, otherwise. NFL, some people think Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback. Other people were arguing last week it was Joe Montana. But it seems in MMA, you have separated yourself to such a degree that there isn't an argument anymore. And I wonder what that rare air up there where you're all by yourself among all these great fighters who have competed, what does that feel like? It, it feels great. It feels great. I've been familiar with high praises for a while now. And um, I'm very aware that you know pride becomes before the fall. So. It's going to be different being the champ again, and everyone's calling you the baddest man on the planet. Um, but uh, you know, my surroundings, my circle, they'll keep me humble. At the end of the day, when I get back to Albuquerque, I'm just another guy on, on my team. And um, when I'm at home with my fiance and my girls, um, with my kids, I'm just another guy. I'm just dad. You know what I mean? So. Uh, so uh, I, I know that grounding myself is going to be more important than ever. Um, not getting too big for my bridges, uh, continuing to do community work, continuing to rub elbows with everybody, um, not getting high on myself. That, that's going to be the key to my success is just remaining humble. John, hey John. one more in the front uh, right here. I don't know if you saw, but Francis tweeted, uh, good job, Johnny Boy, sincerely the heavyweight king. Uh, do you have a response to Francis Ngannou referring to himself? Francis is a big old pussy. Hey, John. John, question over here. John, TJ Lexi, ESPN Gainesville. In your time of reflection uh, and perspective over the past three years. I love that quote. <laughs> I love it. All that muscle with a big ass pussy. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so you, sorry. Do you ever think about your MMA mortality? You know, you have the longest win streak in uh, UFC history. Do you ever think about one day it being over? I know Tom Brady called you to go. He just recently hung it up. Do you ever think about your mortality in the sport? Um, ask that again. I'm sorry. Do you ever, in, during your time of reflection, do you ever think of how long you could keep this going, this, this domination of, in UFC? Do you ever think of your MMA mortality? You know, I just try to take it one fight at a time, one year at a time. I just try to take it one, one you know, just one, one situation at a time. Um, you know, I do fight, I do fight to, to try to live forever in some sense. And, um, you know, it's an honor that years from now people talk about me in barbershops about who was one of the greatest hand-to-hand -hand combatants of all time. And, and uh, I'm honored. I'm honored that I, I'd be considered I'm humbled by it, and um, I just want more challenges. That's really what it's about for me, just just more challenges. John, I, uh, John, I saw you say that you plan on donating your $50,000 bonus to some uh, New Mexico charities. Can you explain a little bit more about what causes you want to work with? 
The uh, the care project is uh, is something that that I created with a, a group of friends when the pandemic started. Um, we started giving back to our community. Originally, we went out bearing arms, and we were, we were literally willing to fight for our city. And um, and um, we switched it from being you know protectors to just guys who gave back. And uh, it's one of the most gratifying things I've ever been a part of. Uh, just just uh, giving back to others and uh, I gotta officially become a a 501c3 uh, so that I can do even more um, but yeah this 50,000 will go I'm not sure what we're gonna do with it we do things with the homeless we, we, we provide gifts for Christmas we do a lot of cool things and uh, it's just gonna go towards that it, it's a great bonus and uh, I'm excited to do some good with it Speaking of uh, money, I, you did not fall victim to the Drake curse tonight. You got $500,000 on you, and you managed to come through for him. Any next reaction to that? Next question. W what's up? Congratulations, champ. Hey, how are you, Ellie? Step back. I'm reporting. Reporting. Uh, you made it look easy. Yes. Tell yes. Tell about that. It, I'm just grateful. I'm just super grateful. I'm grateful. I'm humbled by it. Uh, it was a prediction that, that I had. And, uh, and I was able to go out there and pull it off. It just makes me believe in, in my grappling and, and my physical strength and my wrestling even more so. And I'll, I'll work on that strength and make it even stronger for the next fight. And tell me about Javante Davis visiting you at camp. Oh, it was great to have Tank Davis come out. He, he was a very humble young man, very humble, very soft-spoken. And, uh, you know, his persona on Instagram, he's just this larger-than-life character, you know. But in person, him and his team uh, were very respectful men. Uh, they seem like quality guys, and uh, I wish him all the best uh, moving forward in life. Don't doubt your right. Don't doubt your right. Uh, Dana was in here, didn't realize that you were having an after party. He was uh, a bit worried. Do you think he has a reason to be worried or not? Absolutely not. He has no reason to be worried. I, uh, Dana knows we all make mistakes, and, um, and uh, I am not the man. Uh, I won't even say that. I'm excited to go out. I'm excited to meet my fans. I'm excited to shake their hands, to look them in the eyes, to give them hugs. Uh, I know the tickets were more expensive than they normally are, and a lot of people don't get the opportunity to, to see me in person. And I want to give as much good energy as I can. So um, my after party is not about drinking or anything like that. It's about uh, giving back to my fans. It's the same reason why I had a meet and greet earlier in the week. I, I just, I want to give back to my fans. So everyone over at Hakkasan waiting for me. I hope you guys have the best memories tonight and the best experience. Hey John, right back here. Straight in the back. John, I mean, when you talk about a victory like this, come back, the layoff, win a second title, you know, title second weight class. Was there ever any thought of just, you know, this may be the night you could just walk away on top? Can you, did that ever cross your mind to say, hey, it may not even get better than this. It's such a big victory. It is a big victory, but um, <clears throat> I feel like you're not the champ unless you, defeat the, you defend that belt. And uh, I got at least one more in me, and uh, that's what I'm going to give the fans. On the topic, uh, when you started the fight, the low blow happens almost immediately. Did that throw off any focus or rhythm, obviously, right there at that first opening seconds of the fight? No, no, you know, to be honest with you, it didn't even hurt that bad. I felt it tingling now, don't get me wrong. But uh, it wasn't enough to actually stop me. I didn't want a strike like that to go unnoticed. So I thought I'd take a timeout, let the ref know that, that I was fouled, and, uh, and, and we could continue. If you notice, I didn't take a, a very long timeout. Um, but I didn't want things like that, dirty moves, to be unnoticed. I've noticed in a lot of Cyril Gaines fights, you know, if you look at that Taitu Tavasa fight, he, one of the shots that actually put him down was a strike to the back of the head. Uh, he, he hits people in the back of the head quite a bit, and I didn't want any type of dirty play happening on such a big night. Guys. John, John just for, for the French fans, for the French fans, the, the, it was a, a big expectation, so now you are just sorry for them? No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry to the French fans at all. Uh, this is combat, this is war, and there's no mercy. Guys, mercy, have a great night. Take care.